Good morning. Welcome to the online service for a South Baptist Church on Sunday, the 31st of January 2021. This morning is the last in our January mini series on Seek the Lord with All Your Heart. This morning's passage is Philippians 3. Pete is reading and Chris will be bringing this morning's talk on that passage. Psalm 37 verses 5 to 6 in the Good News Version say this. Give yourself to the Lord. Trust in him and he will help you. He will make your righteousness shine like the noonday sun. Let's pray. May the Father of life pour out his grace on you. May you feel his hand in everything you do and be strengthened by the things he brings you through. May the Son of God be Lord in all your ways. May he shepherd you the length of your days and in your heart may he receive the praise. In Jesus' name, Amen. Here is Pete with the reading. Our reading today is Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings becoming like him in his death, and so, somehow, to attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things, and if so, on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For, as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. 
Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we clearly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Welcome everyone. Today I want to start by telling you a story of a man who made regular investments throughout his life and he poured all his savings into these investments and every now and again when he checked he was pleased that all his investments seemed to be sound. Other people he knew and respected had done the same. And then one day he hears rumours that all his investments are actually worth less than nothing. And the reason for this is that something else has become available that is far, far more valuable. And by comparison, what he has is now worthless. How did he feel? He felt angry when he heard such misinformation. Didn't people realize how dangerous this was if people were to believe it? He insisted that what he had still had great value. He needs to do all he can to protect what he has and what his friends and what his family have, what his community has. And he feels so strongly that he goes about trying to actually destroy the people spreading such wrong information. He's determined to stop this fake news from spreading. He arrests people, he puts them into prison, and no doubt he questions some of them, and he discovers that people are saying that this this commodity that was far, far more valuable cannot be bought. In fact, no one could possibly afford it. But nevertheless, more and more people are saying it is available as a gift. Now, the man I'm speaking of is called Paul. He lived in the first century and he was a Jew, except that his investments were in his religion. He had good religious credentials, and that was what gave meaning to his life. He had credentials that people of his nation admired. He was a Hebrew. He was circumcised as a baby on the eighth day, as he was meant to. He had completed his religious studies under the eminent uh, teacher, Gamaliel. He belonged to the Pharisee sect of the Jewish religion, which was strict about keeping all of the 613 laws known together as the law. Paul had worked all his life to make sure that he knew what these laws were and that he kept them all. He wanted to be faithful to God, to not break any of these laws. Keeping the religious rules were important to being a righteous man. And Paul was a man who wanted to do things right. So what news made Paul feel so threatened? It was the news of a man called Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus had been a teacher who had taught the people for three years before being crucified by the Romans. But many claimed that he had been raised from the dead. Around 500 people had seen him since his death. This Jesus had described himself as the way, the truth and the life the Messiah, the Saviour, 
and he had performed many miracles among the Jewish people, he had said, no one goes to the Father except through me. For Paul and the Jewish people, the, the way to be right with God was through keeping the law. After all, it was God who had given the law, wasn't it, to all the people through Moses? And now this man, Jesus, was referring to the Almighty God as his Father and saying that anyone who was to be with God had to go through him. This Jesus of Nazareth. Who did he think he was? And if all you had to do was believe in this Jesus, then what about the law? Where did that fit in? And scripture tells us that Paul did indeed round up Christians. He arrested them. He had many put to death. And the scripture describes Paul as a breathing murderous threats, those are the words, and persecuting the church before Jesus makes himself known to Paul, who finally realizes that this Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the one that Paul's own scriptures had prophesied would come. This Jesus was the Christ, the saviour that the Jewish people should have been expecting, the one they should have recognised, but most didn't. This man wasn't just Jesus of Nazareth, the carpenter's son. This man was Jesus the Christ. Paul learned he realised that Jesus Christ had come to fulfil the law. That's how it fitted in. The agreement that God had previously made with his people had been, keep my laws and I'll be with you and I'll go with you and I will bless you. The law had been given to guide the people so that they avoided evil living, to keep them safe and away from destruction. But the law had also revealed to the people that no one, no one was good enough to keep it perfectly all the time. And that's why it had been necessary and was still necessary at the time of Paul to sacrifice animals in the Jewish faith, to sacrifice them for the people's wrongdoing. And now God had sent Jesus to do for the people what no one could do for themselves, to live a life and to die without any wrong, without any sin, a life of true righteousness. God had given the law to lead the people, after many generations, to Christ. The human condition of moral imperfection meant that the people could not keep the law, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, as the scripture says. And now Christ is sharing his moral perfection, his holiness, his standing with God, his Father. He was sharing all of that with all those who believe in him. The only possible way to have a relationship with God in his holiness was through Christ. Paul realised it's only Christ that makes people holy. The new agreement God offered to his people was through Christ. It was a better agreement, a better covenant, Believe in my Son, Jesus Christ. Believe in him who's taken away all your wrongdoing, all your sins upon himself and given himself as a sacrifice 
on your behalf on the cross to make a way for you to come to me with confidence. Christ's death and resurrection was to be our death and resurrection too. Death to the old life of trying to measure up and failing and our resurrection through faith in Christ to a life where we are clothed with his righteousness, not our own. Paul realised that to be with God, being born a Jew, no longer counted for anything. His circumcision as a baby on the eighth day no longer counted for anything. His great knowledge of the scriptures counted for nothing. All the years of learning and keeping the 613 Jewish laws counted for nothing. Paul realised that his investments, his credentials in the religious life counted for nothing. They didn't move him any closer to God. These things did not make him righteous before God. No human effort and religious activity would make Paul holy. No wonder Paul says that he now considers everything he previously valued as garbage compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Paul realised that all our righteous acts were like filthy rags to God. Isaiah 64 verse 6. As he says in his letter to the Philippians in chapter 3, this chapter, he received instead a righteousness that came from God. How? Through faith in Christ. And faith in Christ is the only way for us to stand before God in his holiness and majesty. We need to set aside our human efforts and accomplishments and we need to receive what Christ has accomplished for us. No more condemnation. No more trying to earn God's acceptance of us. No wonder Paul now has strong words for those Jews trying to get the new Christians circumcised in the church of Philippi. Those dogs, he calls them. The believers had already accepted the righteousness that comes from God through faith. Now some of the Jews were trying to persuade them to go backwards. And the challenge for the church remains today. Having received Christ, not to go backwards. Not to go back to trying to achieve a human righteousness of our own. That is futile. As Paul writes to the Galatian church on this subject, he says, After beginning by means of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Galatians 3. This remains a danger for the church for us to be alert to. The church is called forwards, forgetting what is past, says Paul. Whether past failure or past successes, we can't rest on our failures or our laurels. We have a choice to move from the confidence in our own sufficiency to confidence in Christ. To move from living in defeat carrying weights and dropping plates to living with a sure hope, a future, a destination drawing us, pulling us heavenward. Moving from having the wind 
against you, so to speak, to having the wind behind you because the Holy Spirit helps us. Moving from living in your own strength, which leads only to disappointment, to having the power of Christ's resurrection. This is what you have when you know Christ. Moving from a life of suffering anyway and staying earthbound to sharing Christ's suffering, suffering for good, to share Christ's resurrection and being heaven bound. Moving from a perishable life with a sell by date to an to an imperishable life without a sell by date. You know, when believers go back to trying to live the Christian life by their own strength, they are regarded not as righteous men and women, but as self righteous men and women. Heaven awaits only those who have placed their faith in Christ and are clothed with his righteousness, not their own. This is the only way we can face death and face the Lord our Saviour and Judge with confidence. Paul says he is straining to what is ahead. I press on, he says, towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards. In Christ Jesus, verses 13 and 14 of our passage today. The life of the church and of the Christ follower is to be one of forward movement. God can and will use us until the very end end of our earthly life. You know, we have many things to our name, don't we, here on earth? On deeds and qualifications, on property, on cars. But we know that we can't take any of them with us, can we? Our earthly possessions, our investments, our personal credentials and qualifications, our earthly reputation, our skills and training, everything earthly stays behind. Whether we stay behind or whether we're caught up in heaven with Christ on that judgment day of his return depends on one thing and one thing only. Will you, will I, be found in Christ and will Christ be found in us on that day? And today I ask the question of us, is it faith in Christ that you have or is it faith in yourself? I finish with the words of the Apostle Paul from our passage today. He says this, I once thought these things were valuable. I now consider them worthless for the sake of Christ. And what's more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. 
I want to know Christ, he says. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for your great gift to us in the person of Jesus. We thank you that we do not have to try to be perfect on our own, but rather that the gift bought by the blood of Jesus means that we can be clothed in a righteousness that is not our own. Help us to live by faith in trust of your goodness, living in the strength given by your Spirit, with the wind at our backs, guiding us forward. In Jesus' name, Amen. Here is Alan singing Only by Grace. Yeah. 